let's keep it moving here. Let's let's go back into the running backs and we'll kind of tie three guys up that seem to be always talked about together. And it's it's uh, you know, it's either you like one of those guys and then you hate the rest. Um, and it, it seems to vary widely. Um, sure. We're talking Tucker, Evans and Bigsby. And we, we, we've touched on them throughout the episode here, but those seem to be kind of the next guys. And they seem to be very kind of divisive of, mm-hmm. of you know, whether you love them or you hate them. Some guys are like Evans is the, the RB2. Sure, Some guys sure. are like Evans is a bust. Some guys are Tucker RB2 tanks underrated, you know, so give me your give me your synopsis on there we could maybe start with evans who who kind of i i think the red flags are the easiest to kind of spot of of pointing out or at least or at least say from an out from a very thousand foot perspective of well you know the most common thing is well he couldn't win at tcu and then goes to old miss and then gets beat out again so let's take it from the evans perspective here i think talent wise you can make an absolute case that he's a you know RB two RB three in this class right uh, absolutely the RB two or three in this class yeah right I, okay yeah I think realistically I mean you're looking at a lot of holes a lot of gaps and a lot of question marks with kind of like Zach Evans this is the number one running back recruit in his class top fifteen consensus recruit on all recruiting networks why didn't he improve and why didn't he prove it that those are the two big questions that you ask. Um, yeah, was one, usually yeah. efficient one on the field. That's the thing is the one on the field is why, like why <laughs> right. you right. have the number one recruit at the position in your class in your TCU, like mm-hmm. not a powerhouse yet. You don't turn around and give that guy the ball 20 times a game, 15 mm-hmm. times a game. Only had 15 or more touches in 31% of games. Not good. Like, no. why Why did that happen? And is I that think, more to Miller's credit and or Judkins credit? Or do you, do you think, do you have any great underlying reason of why you might suspect like, you know, that, that, that it didn't quite ever get to being him, at least being the one a rather yeah. than kind of the one B for sure. I think really it, it boils down to the trust of the coaching staff. You have two coaching staffs that didn't trust him to have the bulk of the workload. Two, mm-hmm. not one, two. Why? I think really the number one thing you can point to, and this is information we don't know, but the the recruiting fiasco, right? Where he got kicked off the team in the state championship game. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a red flag if you're an, a, a talent evaluator. You're like, okay, well, that's kind of strange. Where's this state guy's head game. at? What, what's the attitude? Ex- exactly, right? What's the one, and two? It, what's the work ethic? Right. It, it's, it's the attitude. It's the... It's going in to work every day. Mm -hmm. Like, does he have that? I don't know. I'm not judging him at all. It's just the question. Does he? That the more questions we raise, the more NFL evaluators like "Mm, we're pushing him down his board. Mm -hmm. Right. This he's going to go from RB two talent wise. We don't care. We're taking him in RB nine. Right. Right. It's not. It's not like Kenny Walker where you transferred one place and yeah, you were in a weird timeshare in the other and then you just go take over the other right. spot. you just ball out at michigan right. state right right um but no yeah it's just it's a weird it's weird man because he, he's on the field he's probably the most efficient back in this class in terms of per touch mm. per touch data but when you watch him play it's like all right he does one thing well he he gets downhill and he punishes dudes mm. that's really it he's He's not a great receiver. Doesn't offer you an expansive lateral skill set. He's unsure as a pass protector. And he seems to not understand where he's at in space a lot, which is really strange. He's just a super talented player that hasn't figured it out yet, which is okay, right? Well, the NFL actually be like, hey, I want to take a guy like this. I want to mold him into, you know, I want to mold him into a really good running back. I think he can be. If he's the second best running back in this class, I don't, yeah. He has the size and the and the uh, the height and the weight. It's, he's not like a small. He's not mm-hmm. one of these guys that you're worried about. He has the stature. Um, and it seems yes, like the does. athletic prowess. Obviously, if you're the number one recruit, you're not. Yes. You're, you're not lacking talent athletically. Um, right. So it, that that's certainly an interesting. You know, he has those boxes checked. It just seems to be something amiss. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing we don't know, right? And mm-hmm. it's just hard to pinpoint it. Like the, especially when we're talking about a guy, okay, where do I have him in this class in terms of RB2, 3, 4, 5, et cetera? If I don't have the answer to something and I can't obtain it, probably gonna, I'm probably going to avoid that player for sure of things. Because mm-hmm. there's other guys in his tier, 
I think Tucker's one of them too. I, I, I would rather take Tucker over Evans, right? I just mm-hmm. think he's a he's more of a sure thing in the NFL's eyes, right? Bigsby, another question. That's kind of where those two are really good comparables in this class because Evans both, and Bigsby, yeah, both lit it up as a freshman. Um, mm-hmm. Bigsby was freshman of the year, I think, in the SEC. Was incredible. Both were so top much five, hype on him. Six, so, so much hype much on him hype. after that top year. Five top five, six Devi picks, both of them. Um, I remember having Devi drafts that year, and people were trying to trade up to get both those dudes. Like mm-hmm. that was a big deal. But we didn't see anything really pop in terms of improvement in right. either of those guys, right? They kind of were what they were, and we didn't see. Okay, is there a next step, next layer to their game? Um, Bigsby, I think, got a little bit quicker. We saw that on film. Um, utilized more as a pass catcher. Yeah, you have less questions with Bigsby than you do with Evans. Similar levels of talent. I think Evans is probably a little more talented. Is there, I was going to say they're better. Is one a little bit maybe have a higher? Ceiling. I would say ceiling wise, Evans probably one of the. As a pure runner, Evans is probably the second best back in this class in terms of ceiling as a as a runner. Mm-hmm. Is, is does he get close to it? I don't know. He could be Ronald Jones. Like that's really the scary part about it is mm-hmm. he could literally be Ronald Jones. That's in the range of outcomes for him, and that's why for me it's like okay, I'd, I'd rather take a guy like Charbonnet, right? Who's yeah. more of a sure thing in my opinion. I got I'd Charbonnet take, probably over all those guys except for Gibbs right now. For sure, yeah, I have it the same way. And then a guy like Tucker, okay, I think the NFL is going to probably like Tucker enough to draft him in the second, third round. We're going to take him. We're going to take so guy like Tajay you're putting, Spears. You're putting, you're putting, uh, you'd, you'd put it maybe Tucker Tank Evans for you? Like if, if you had to kind of go off of it right now? or, or would Yeah, you rather, I think so. Does the, for does me, the ceiling yeah. of Evans appeal more than this floor of Tank? No, I think because you're, you're looking at where you're drafting them. Mm-hmm. Right. This isn't like an if, if it was like an open forum, you get to choose the player. Sure. I'll take Evans, whatever. I mean, I'd rather take the ceiling. Uh-huh. But if I'm, you know, if I'm in the late first round, that's the price I got to pay. I'd rather, I'd rather just go take, you know, a Zay Flowers. Yeah. At that price. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to I don't want to pay a mid to late first round pick on someone who's who I think is the furthest away from a sure thing mm-hmm. at this point in the cycle. So. I think as we get more clarity on a lot of these things, how he's interviewing, um, watching the interviews is important too. Because you can really see kind of, in my opinion, who they psychological, are. Yeah, who they are as a person. Now, some people are really good at throwing that chameleon suit oh, on. A hundred percent. And we'll but those are your smart, those are yeah. smart dudes too. Like you, <laughs> yeah. you, you could kind of see that shit too. It's funny. Um, but like really like the, the biggest one, I, I, I'll i never forget it. My favorite one was Jonathan Taylor. Mm-hmm. Like this guy's got it. He's right. smart. He's intelligent. He he answers questions with great context. Like he's just, he's the seems like a really genuine smart yeah. person that you want in in a running back room. Yeah, and I mean, dude, the longer that I've been paying attention to this, I've been playing fantasy football for a while. But the longer I've been paying attention to the rookie cycles and trying to figure out who's good and who isn't, you know, obviously you can out talent a lot of people if it's that great, um, but you know, the, the, the head and the, and the work ethic and the, the smartness and the want to is, is really, I think what sets so much apart from, from player to player. Um, I just, it seems like a lot of the times, like, you know, is greatness gets hampered by, Hey, I've made it. I'm just going to rely on talent. Whereas, you know, maybe somebody who isn't quite as talented is going to get in there and work their ass off every day and be smart about it and be wanting to get better. And, you know, I don't know that, that, that always happens. And are, you, you're saying that that may be something that concerns you with Evans. Yeah, for sure. I, th- I think really when you look at the want to, like that's the big thing. We don't have an answer to that for a lot of right. these guys, right? We don't know what they're like as people, but what we can do is is look at you know things that happened in the past with them and and try to you know add context to those. And you know with with Evans, you have a lot of questions. You you have the what the hell happened as a senior in high school, man? You were the number one recruit. You didn't even play in your team state championship game. Yeah, like because you were mad that your phone got taken away. Like that's really the reason. It's insane, right? But that's really like NFL evaluators are going to do their due diligence on it. People are like, well, it doesn't matter. No, it's it's freaking four years ago. Who cares? He's a yeah. high school senior. A high school senior, an 18-year-old male, and an 18-year-old male that is the number one running back recruit in the nation, in the biggest sport in our nation, the biggest sport in the United States of America. Right. That's a lot different than being a normal 18-year-old male. 
Right. You have a lot more responsibility. You have a, you have a, you know, there's a bigger weight to that than, right. than you know, your normal kid. And it's under saying that responsibility that can change. Obviously with time, you mature, you get older, sure. you're, you're able to, you know, you're able to kind of conceptualize those things and grow. But when you've kind of heard similar things at both stops, it has never been about the talent of a guy like Zach Evans. Never. It's from what I'm reading, it's, it's we're kind of unsure about the kid. Right, right. Like he's not a bad kid, not a bad person. It's just we just don't really want to give this guy a, you know, a 20 p- touch per game workload because we can't really trust him on the field. Yeah, grab it. You need to be able to grab a hold of this opportunity and take command. And it just it doesn't seem like he wants to to be, you know, well, right. Grab that thing by the horns and just say, I'm taking this. I'm the best motherfucker out here. I'm the exactly. baddest dude. You yeah. know, um, to, to maybe and it, it comes down to details and the little things, you know, just maybe still just relying on and you and you can grow and develop for um, sure. So so what makes what you said, Tucker, maybe over all them, what makes you say Tucker over over all those guys? I think he's the safest. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he's kind of he's kind of proved the consistency. Um, and that's really what it comes down to, right? Is, is, is I'd rather take a guy who's had a consistent, um, has had a consistent go in collegiate football than someone who's been very up and down, right? You, you, you either want a guy that's consistent or a guy that's had like, holy cow, like this guy that two, three really, really high end years, you know, a guy like Tucker's been good for right. three years. And you've seen that, right? You've seen, you've seen, he's been good for more than one year. And that's something you can kind of quantify and, and say, okay, this is a guy who's been consistent as a rusher. He's developed as a receiver. We want to make sure that, you know, we want him on our NFL roster. And I think he's going to be a guy too. He'll run, you know, he'll probably weigh in around 215. He'll probably run around 443, 445 in the 40. Mm-hmm. NFL teams are going to want that. Um, Good enough of a pass catcher. Exactly. Uh, right. He's not a liability there. So um, my thoughts are, I think he's going to be drafted over both those guys, unless guys like Evans and Bigsby really show up in their pre-draft process and, and really yeah. show NFL teams that, Hey, we do deserve to be in, in the day two mix. Evans is, I think the interviews with Evans would be the most important thing. He's hugely important. Sure. We have to be able to explain away a lot of the things that people are saying that, you know, that, media outlets have said right you want to be able to provide explanation to what some of your faults are viewed as um if he can do that i think he's he might have, he has a chance of being a third rounder um he's he has a he has the talent of a second round pick absolutely mm-hmm. it's just can he add context to a lot of the questions that people have and and right now on bigsby and evans you you probably are, are maybe not even thinking round three guys i think we're going to see both those guys go around when we saw Elijah Mitchell go a couple of years ago. I think round four, round five. Yeah. Um, right now. I mm-hmm. think if, you know, if Evans runs four, three, something at the combine, eh, might be, a, <laughs> might be sure. around three. Might pick. be willing to uh, take a, take a little bit more of a shot. Right. Right. You don't see that level of like, if a play speed with Evans on field, he's the good accelerator. He's okay at max velocity. Seems the contact balance seems really good. Like he's but, seems hard to bring down. Yeah, he, he's he, him he's and tank force, really. Yeah, yeah, he's a force driven mover, man. He, he he's someone you don't in open space you don't want to get in front of. Yeah. Um, but I think really it's gonna be the pre draft process for both these dudes. Like, are they yeah. gonna are they gonna show up and show teams, hey, you know, I I want to be the guy in the league. Like, I put whatever in my past behind me, and I'm gonna I'm here to work. If all three of these guys get the the same around the same ish capital, uh, are you then much more comfortable? Like the second, the, the round two ish, maybe even round three, are you more comfortable taking them all in the end of the first round of a fantasy draft? Yeah, depending on where they go. But yeah, I think really I'm more capital is going to speak a lot to those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Tucker is going to be. I think he will get the capital that we want to see. If let's say Evans and Bigsby both show out and the NFL has no reservations on either of those guys and it's a, you know, hey, they're round two dudes, absolutely. Any day, yeah. Every day of the week. The NFL speaks, man. That's really, it's it's a multi-billion dollar league. Like this is right. like, right. I want to trust, like, hey, like my eyes are, I think my eyes are good. Right. So if, if I look at these guys and I say with like Zach Evans, I'm like, ah, I don't see him being a high level NFL player. If an NFL team's like, you know what, we want this guy in the second round. Okay, let's turn back on some Zach Evans tape and see why they arrived at that. Right. 
Right. And, it, you know, you, you mentioned Tutu Atwell. It only takes one to kind of, you know, exactly. br- bring that up and, may, and maybe, you know, you, you've got enough conviction in, in your thing to say, hey, no, you know, I'm, I, I'll move him up a little bit, but I'm still going to take these other guys over them. Um, so I think it's important not to not to just move them all the way up in front. If you still have some concern, even though maybe the NFL tells you one thing, I think it's it's OK to bump them up some, but maybe not just jump them ahead of everybody, because there are certainly plenty of guys who get overdrafted for silly reasons. Although oh, for sure Evans has the pedigree, the build, the size the two, two, one was kind of weird. That's an example of just small, weird, weird draft pick. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no. It, that's just a really, really strange one for me, but yeah, I think, you know, I think the pedigree you mentioned, you hit the nail on the head. I think that's really what you're, you're looking at with Evans. I mean, there's a reason why he's the number one running back recruit in the nation. Sure. In his, you know, into that, in that draft cycle. Um, Sorry, so, that's like coming out of high school. So I think yeah. you, you understand like there's a level of talent there that that people saw nationally. It wasn't like it was just one draft up, one um one recruiting outlet. It was multiple that had him number one, had him a top fifteen consensus player that you know in that recruiting class. Right. That speaks to something, right? There was a level of talent there. So it's is an NFL team to maximize that and get the most out of it. That's the big question. Sure. So, so to wrap it up, it, it'd be Tucker Tank Evans right now, and it's sort of a right for me right now. I think that's kind of where you're leaning on safety in terms of role. I think, gotcha. and and Tucker would right. maybe be the only one that you would feel good about in the first round still of a draft. Yeah, right now, if I'm drafting today, yeah, this moment, I think yeah. so, absolutely. Yeah.